Greetings and welcome to another Patch Notes video here at Words About Games, our weekly video series that lets us host discussions and post opinion pieces about our various thoughts on games, gaming and the industry. Today I'm once again going to treat this video essay series as my own personal journal, with a short video about how video games played a big role in my realising I was transgender and beginning my transition. Half to get these things off my chest and half because I think it might be an interesting story for someone out there. This video will probably have a similar title to an excellent Polygon article by Margaret Evans, which inspired me to put this all into her words. The article is linked in the description below and you should definitely go and give it a read. I've danced around the topic of how I slowly came to the realisation that I was transgender, which somehow managed to happen all at once and also over the course of nearly two decades. It's something I've unpacked a lot over the course of the past year and change and it probably won't surprise you to learn that video games played a fairly substantial role in cracking my egg. Uh, which is a term from some trans subreddits that refers to the moment a trans person realises that they're trans. Video games are powerful. Something we discussed a few weeks back on the podcast when we sat down to talk a little about Margaret's article. And we sometimes forget just how powerful a medium they can be when we lose ourselves down the various rabbit holes of Anthem's terrible launch or a lack of accessibility options in FromSoft's latest game. For this week's essay, I wanted to sit down and expand on what we talked about and chat a little about how video games changed my life. Because I'm just that kind of storyteller, I'm going to start this story in Madeira as by talking about the day before and the day of, and then probably jump all over the place as far as the timeline goes. The night before my egg cracked and my life changed forever, I was, as I so often am, browsing social media before I went to sleep. I'm a member of a Facebook group for gamers that includes a lot of LGBTQ plus folks, so it wasn't terribly uncommon for me to see gaming related posts from that perspective. One of the last things I read before I went to sleep said the following, which is heavily paraphrased as I didn't save the post. It wasn't until months later that I realised this was part of what triggered me to start questioning my gender identity. When you choose female protagonists, because getting referred to by the correct pronouns is immensely satisfying. Yeah, it probably said something completely different, but it was well over a year ago at this point, and that was the basic gist of the post. At the time, I didn't realise it, probably because I was practically asleep while I was browsing social media, but that statement impacted me in a big way. To explain why, I need to talk about, of all things, South Park the Fractured But Whole. No, I'm not kidding. Fractured But Whole was a pretty good game about kids playing superheroes in the usual South Park style. In the game, there was a fairly minor subplot involving the South Park School's guidance counsellor where you had different gender identities explained to you. I had more or less important my character from the previous game where you were one of the boys no matter what. When the options came up I decided, because I was reviewing the game, or at least that was my justification to myself, that I'd pick something different and I ended up choosing Transgender Girl, which was about as far removed from where I'd started as I could think to go. The choice didn't really have that much of an effect on the game. Some rednecks would hassle my character, but they did that no matter what options you chose. And the boys did, for the most part, continue to treat you as a boy regardless. I did completely change my character's look to a more feminine expression, as if I'd given myself permission to do so, whereas before I couldn't. Having an expanded range of options did let me appreciate the customization a bit more, since I was actually using it. Every now and again though, the game would acknowledge the choice that you'd made. The boys would make ironic comments, there was a subplot involving your parents, and Wendy outright says that she knew I was a girl the whole time. In the rare moments the game acknowledged that my character was a girl, it felt really good, in a way that I couldn't quite put my finger on. This was many months before I'd read that post on social media, so I couldn't identify the satisfaction I was feeling as actual satisfaction. Finally, a game was acknowledging me in a way that I actually wanted. This wasn't exactly the first time I'd chosen to play a woman in a video game, hashtag femship till I die. What made this different was how I had made the choice. In other games like Mass Effect, I had gone into the game from the start knowing the character I was playing was a woman, so it framed the entire experience completely differently. I'd come up with many justifications for always choosing to play a female protagonist, but they all essentially boiled down to it just felt right once I truly interrogated them. There was always some level of satisfaction for me that came from playing video games as a female character, although less so in games like Mass Effect or anything else where you were playing a specific character. But in South Park I had been, up until that moment in the Guidance Counselor's office, just playing one of the boys. This was the first time anyone had actually asked me the question. 
and whether I really did choose to be trans in South Park because I was just being a thorough reviewer, or it was my brain's way of subconsciously working through some stuff it had been struggling with for a long time, the net result was the same. In the time between playing South Park and my egg cracking, I played many other games, but there were undoubtedly others that helped me along the way. Two games I played more or less back to back right after I started questioning my gender was Celeste, a game about accepting yourself, and The Red Strings Club, a game with an actual transgender woman in it. Both of those games are really good, by the way, and if you haven't played them, I highly recommend picking them up. Looking back on my feelings over the years, which is something I did a lot in the early days of my coming to terms with my being trans, it had become pretty obvious that this had been on my mind in some way or another for a very long time, and I'd been expressing it a lot through video games. Whether it was being excited to briefly play Final Fantasy VII with Tifa as party leader back in the 90s, or whether I was creating a female character in the VR game Star Trek Bridge Crew and experiencing some very strong feelings about it, but not really having much time to think about it because it was a multiplayer game, we weren't very good at it, and the bridge was exploding all around us. What finally cracked it for me was that weird sequence of events that stretched from being asked if I was a transgender woman in South Park to finding out why answering yes had such a profoundly satisfying effect on me. It wasn't just this that convinced me, of course, that would be mental. This was just the inciting incident. Immediately after my brain had made this connection, I was scouring Reddit for stories, talking things over with a couple of my close friends, and asking questions of some wonderful trans women on Twitter, who were kind enough to reply to this complete stranger asking them what were probably highly personal questions about themselves. And after all of this, I'm sitting here, about to hit my one year anniversary of starting hormone replacement therapy, having come out last September to the wonderful support of a fantastic community and some of the best friends I could have ever asked for. It's been a challenge at times, but it's honestly been the best year of my life. And I owe a lot of it to bloody South Park of all things. I wanted to end the video on that last sentence as some sort of dry humour joke, but I did also want to use this video and that sentence to make the point that it shouldn't have taken a South Park video game to help me come to terms with my gender identity. There's a lot I could say about LGBTQ plus representation in everyday life, and how if trans people could live more openly I probably would never have went decades without realising I was trans myself. But video games can actually be really interesting places to explore these things from a relatively safe space, which is also touched upon in the Margaret Evans article I mentioned at the top of this video. Again, if you haven't read it, it's in the description below. You should definitely go and check it out. Video games can allow us to experiment and ask questions in a way that no other medium possibly could. If the representation was even a fraction better for transgender playable characters, then perhaps people like me would not need to go through such long periods of time without the basic information necessary to realise what's going on in their head. Okay, this bit at the end's gotten a bit rambly, and honestly, I didn't have such a clean ending sentence this time as I did before I decided to go on a minor tangent about how important representation is in games and how much it could mean for the people who are in my position. So I'll just end by saying Happy Pride Month! to all my LGBTQ plus siblings. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please leave us a comment, like, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got tons of awesome videos coming every week, including review impressions, indie game of the week, debate-driven top five lists, video essays, and our weekly podcast where we discuss games, gaming culture, and the games industry. We also stream three times a week at twitch.tv slash wordsaboutgames. But most importantly, have a fantastic day.